Here we go. All right. We are about to begin another Bid Nerds. Here we are. Oh, yeah. Thanks, uh, Michael Deep, making all sorry. kinds of snorty, sorry, slobbery sorry, sorry. noises for everyone. We're live now. That was uh, that was kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Bid Nerds, where we make you uh, gag and throw up on your breakfast uh, while we uh, eat ours. Uh, welcome yeah. to Bid Nerds. Uh, my name is JP. I'm John Polnick. Look, we've got a little lower third there. That's me. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of that, and I'm gonna throw up Michael Deep. He's a he's a I don't know. He's an expert or something on auctions. I don't know. That's what his lower third said. So he's a professional auction Good morning. specialist. Good morning, Jay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome to Bid Nerds. This is the channel where you show up every day, every weekday at around 9 o'clock in the morning when we decide to actually get to it. And uh, we talk about our top five picks of cars on cars and bids and bring a trailer and give you our expert advice as to why these are our top five picks. Uh, but when it really comes down to it, we are not experts. We're kind of idiots. In fact, it's pretty obvious when we try to uh, predict what the cars will bid to or if they'll sell or for how much, and we're just wrong constantly. But uh, it's a it's, it's good fun. Join us in the conversation. Let us know about cars you want us to talk about. Today, we're going to start actually uh, not with our top five picks. We're actually going to talk about a car real quick that went live, uh, that actually um, closed yesterday, or at least the auction ended. I, it didn't actually, the car yeah. didn't close. What was this? Why did you want to talk about this, Michael Deep? Yeah, so I thought it was really interesting. Um, yesterday, I bring a trailer, uh, John. Uh, 1992 Alfa Romeo Spider Veloce with 30,000 miles was bid to $22,500 and did not meet its reserve. And my jaw hit the ground in our house here in San Francisco because I, I am just stunned that a reserve on an Alpha Spider could have been set anywhere over twenty thousand dollars. That's ludicrous to me. Um, this car, had, when it was sold new uh, twenty eight years ago, um, and again, I'm not exactly sure what the MSRP on this car, but I imagine it was around thirty grand. Um, these cars have been nowhere near that value all this time. That that's insane, especially uh, one that's got some miles on it. Now again. This car is in like new condition. It's in, it's in, you know, it's a beautiful car. Uh, but I, I, what I was speculating, what I'm guessing is that about a month ago, a, a unused 93 Alfa Romeo Spider Veloce from Northern California that had just 370 miles on it and was in really, uh, you know, kind of museum condition, um, brought a, what has to be a record amount of $75,500 on the 29th of October on Bring a Trailer. Um, you and I uh, paid close attention to this auction, and we were astonished. I think I bid 50, you bid 60, and we were both wrong because this car made over 75, which is insane. But I, my, my, what I'm waxing poetically about is, did the result of this auction color or in some way alter what could already have been set a, a, uh, a reserve for this green 92 car and, and did bring a trailer, adjust that uh you know, reserve on the behest of either the result from the 93 or at the urging of the consigner. Um, because we know that at the moment it's taking six to 10 weeks to get your car from uh, application uh, to live auction uh, with Bring a Trailer. So since these auctions were only about a month apart, it's likely that this car was already set on its trajectory. And I can't imagine that prior to the sale of the 93, that BAT would have set a, a, a greater than $20,000 reserve on an Alpha Spider that's just not been in the market for them at all. So I just wonder if this failure to meet reserve is a result of that uh, result last month or not. And, and or are we just watching the, you know, the, the rise of the Alpha Spider, especially the, the last itineration of it, um, where early 60s, uh, mid 60s duettos um, have been sort of the the gold standard for Alpha Spiders, this now seems to be the second most valuable version of the car. Well, I mean, I think like any other car from the era, the 80s and 90s versions of things are surpassing the values of some of the older stuff because yeah. of the people who are looking to buy enthusiasts and uh, collector cars. They're guys our age. They're guys that want, yeah. what is the car that we wanted when we were in high school? It wasn't a yeah. 60s Alpha. It was a brand new Alpha. Um, right. You know, and, Great point. 
and the car and the but the thing about these two cars is really weird you know the 300 mile one that went for seventy five thousand dollars was the exact car you want it was red on black with a manual transmission um yeah. <clears throat> whereas that green one uh beautiful car but it had a it's an automatic. So what on earth were the people at bring a trailer thinking when they set the reserve on that? And I'm with you. I mean, that car had to have been in the queue before the lower miles one. I think you're right that the, that people are seeing the value of these kind of go on an upward trajectory. And I do think that that $75,000 one is going to make people think that their cars are worth more than they actually are. Um, But uh, I, you know, had that green car had a manual transmission, I think it would easily have gone for uh, another, you know, five, ten thousand dollars, um, because <clears throat> it was the Quattrofolio. What, how do you pronounce that? The Quattrofolio. Was, Quattrofolio. Whereas there was another yeah. one like a week before that was a very similar car, like almost identical, identical, but it was just a graduate version. Um, so you know, but it bid and sold it like what was it twenty one? So it, the market's yeah. weird. Sometimes you got to yeah. wonder what the hell bring a trailer is. They're usually very, very aggressive with yeah. their. Uh, reserves and they don't let you do a very high reserve this green car with the automatic also sold out of lodi california out of northern california like our seventy five thousand dollar one a month ago Mm. but i'm telling you jp if somebody introduced me to this guy and he said michael what's my car worth i would have told him if you get 16 17 or eighteen thousand dollars take the money and run you have an automatic green alpha nobody wants that car and yet i was wrong that car achieved five thousand dollars more than my high estimate yeah. um and no sale what i just like blah, 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 what <laughs> it makes not no sense just five thousand dollars more but you mm. know when you think because it's kind of t- when we go with dollar values it's a little difficult because some cars are worth five thousand dollars and so a five thousand dollar discrepancy is a hundred percent off whereas five thousand right. dollars off on a two hundred thousand dollar car you're pretty much nailing it so right. you know this card brought well over 25, almost 30% more than it should have. Right. Um, and the guy didn't sell it. His reserve yeah, was, didn't was sell. high. He didn't sell it, and BAT didn't sell it. I'm like, <clears throat> wait, yeah. what am I missing? I, If anybody knows Alphas, I would think I know a thing or two about them, but this is insane to me. Like, 22.5, what do you put down yeah. the pipe, buddy, yeah. and go to the bank. Yeah, anyway, he, uh, right. he is going to own that car uh, for a long time now. He'll never sell it. He'll never get that money. Okay, let's go on to cars yeah. that are coming up to bid today. Yeah. Let's go to our top five picks today. What car do you want to start with? Absolutely. Let's start with a car you picked on Bring a Trailer. Um, these things were really cool, JP. I've always been a fanboy. I do think you know a little bit more about them. We are talking about a 1986 Mercedes-Benz 280 GE G-Wagon. Uh, this thing's really cool. Offered out of Humble, Texas imported into the united states because jp correct me if i'm wrong in 1986 you could not buy this car at your mercedes dealership anywhere correct. near jerkwater usa um the car facts on this car starts in the year 2000 when the car was 14 years old out of new jersey which uh you car fans know is a deep water port so it's entirely possible that this car was imported in that area and registered in that area uh, when it was brought in. Um, the car shows 35,000 miles, but the listing suggests that it is true mile unknown. This is using the uh, venerable, reliable, and often used from Mercedes in that era, the 2.8 liter inline six. They used that motor in almost every platform they made. That is uh, one bulletproof, if unemotional motor. Um, it's matted to a four-speed automatic. This car, it can climb a wall. It comes with two transfer cases for each of the front and rear axles if i'm saying that correct um this is a all-wheel drive four-wheel drive uh there's a difference there i think it's a four-wheel drive and that you can lock one of the diffs is that right yeah correct um the interior on this car is bomb i love the uh sort of gray and blue um check seats i'm not sure if they're original uh i think they are because i've seen similar patterns like this from that era with mercedes um, but they look to be in really good shape. They could have been recovered. Anyway, it's, it's totally befitting the car and the era. So there you have it. Um, a gray market import, unobtainium in its finest sense, and um, sitting with just, uh, let's take a quick look, 14 bids at $13,000 being offered out of Texas. This tr- would be a great value in light of the prices used contemporary U.S. market G-Wagons are bringing. So there you go. Get your... Um, your, uh, how do I say, Radwood Ready G-Wagon. 
uh, out of Humble, Texas on Bring a Trailer today. Baller on a budget right here, right? Um, For sure. You know, I think, and I say that as a joke, but really it's not. I mean, I think... It's not. The pers- well, okay, so the person that buys this that wants a G-Wagon uh, but can't afford a modern or semi-modern G-Wagon, like a, and when I say modern, I say like a 2000 and up because that's really when right. G-Wagons, they put the big V8s yeah. in and started making them luxurious inside. You can see inside yeah. this car, it's very Spartan. This is back yeah. when these vehicles were barely a step above a military vehicle um, right the cloth interior some of them have manuals uh, you're right about that engine you are not getting out of your own way anytime quickly um, right this car will disappoint any modern g-wagon uh, if you driver if you right. are the type yeah. of person that will put 24 inch wheels not tires but wheels on your mm-hmm. g-wagon and you drive this you're gonna be like what the hell it is yeah. so slow um, right it might as well be a diesel. Right. Uh, and, and they do make them in diesel, too, and they're even slower. Right, right, um, right. But this car, you know, this car really is a true, like, off-road, rugged, uh, yeah. you know, if you got to drive on the freeway, you can do it. It's, you're going to be able to go the freeway speed, and it, you'll get there. Um, uh, right. But, uh, you know, this is just a beautiful car to have on the ranch or to drive around town. Or if you're yeah, up yeah. in Nantucket and you don't want to have a, um, what it would it be, a Jeep Grand Cherokee or right, Grand right. Wagoneer, you're probably going to be in one of these. That interior is right. so fantastic. Um, yeah, cor- correct me if I'm wrong, but, I mean, the, when you talk about the Spartan interior, there's no mm-hmm. wood and leather appointments in this car because, in essence, if you're truly driving this car um, – overland off road or maybe even across a creek the idea is that if you've got dirt sand mud or even water inside the yep. car you could take a hose to it and just rinse it off that's yep. the point of having a spartan interior on an off-road vehicle is that you just don't give a rat's ass yep. and uh and this car is a reflection of that rather than the philosophy that when mercedes-benz north america decided to import the cars officially they had to remain a luxury vehicle and they put every convenience you could possibly imagine in the g-wagon Correct. Um, this car, you know, being from the Northeast and now living where it does in Texas is yeah. has succumbed to, to some serious rust issues. I don't okay. see really bad rust necessarily underneath it on in the chassis. Like it's not like a rust bucket, but there's straight up holes in the hood. There's, you know, in some of the wow. windshield seams and stuff like that, there are some real <clears throat> genuine rust issues with this vehicle. So again, if you're looking to be a baller with this thing, <clears throat> Um, you're, this is not, yeah, this is, if you got a hip hop album dropping on Friday, this is not your ride. Um, <laughs> no. you yeah, know. Chrome wheels, chrome wheels aren't going to fix this car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now on the other hand, if, uh, you know, maybe if you got a country and Western, uh, album dropping on Friday, this might be right. rig because, uh, you know, all the good old boys, you're going to be able to go anywhere a guy with a Jeep or, yeah, totally. you know, or better because I mean, this has a real <laughs> locking differential. That means sure. it, you know, a lot of the locking diffs that modern cars have are electronic. They're not actual locking diffs. This is the real deal. So yeah. anyways, uh, I love it. Yeah. I'd love to own it. Um, I'm actually going to be paying attention to this auction. Um, yeah. I think it's going to go should. a lot higher, but uh, but it's possible someone could steal this. Uh, some, of that, some of those little rust bubbles could really scare some people away. Another thing to note on this before we get to your bid is that it does have air conditioning. Um, yes, it does. Really rare on the older yeah. ones. Usually they yeah. don't. And that's kind of a deal killer if you're in LA or Vegas. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Michael D., what's your bid? So, I bid $21,000 on this mm. car on the premise that I think this car should be worth twenty six or twenty eight if it weren't for the rust. And I think the TMU, true mileage unknown, um, probably holds it back. But I, still, at 21 with a tiny bit of rust for a brutal off road vehicle, I think that's still a, a super value and a, a great pick. Um, somebody will be happy with this car despite any mighty tiny little holes that are in it. Have fun with it. Beat the snot out of it. Enjoy. Yeah, beautiful ride. I'd love to own it. I'm actually going to be softer than that. Uh, really? I'm actually going to bid under that. Um, I think this is, if it were in really good shape and didn't have the rust issues, yeah, uh, you're you're in the right ballpark. But I... I think this thing's going to have a hard time breaking 20. I'm going to say 19.5. Right. Ooh, you chicken shit. All right, cool. Just underneath. Sorry. Just underneath. All right. Okay, Moving let's on. Pop, let's pop over to Cars and Bids. Uh, here's a really cool car that is getting zero love for some reason. Uh, we're looking at a 2006 BMW 325XI with a six-speed manual. This is your Northwest 
uh, super baller car. You're talking about um, a European sports sedan with all wheel drive and a manual transmission. This is your four seasons sports sedan. If you had to have one car to do it all, uh, this could be your vehicle. Um, I believe this car has lived in the Northwest its entire life. Um, it has 62,900 miles on it. And uh, it's, not, it's a no stories car. There's, there's no weird things on the Carfax. There's no modifications. There's no real issues. There's like a couple of tiny little dings or something. And that's about it. I, this is a no nonsense car. And yet only five bids and it's sitting at $5,000 with two hours to go. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I would think a an all-wheel drive BMW manual sports sedan would bring at least 10000 bucks, and I don't think this car is going to make it there. So, JP, please explain to me and our audience what I'm missing, because I don't see it. I think this is a ridiculous value for somebody at this number. Uh, I couldn't agree more that this is and a, a no fantastic reserve, sorry, car for the sorry. race place. Yeah. 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 Um, so, okay, I think there's two things potentially going on i mean one you're absolutely right this is the perfect northwest car and bmws with manuals are very popular in the northwest right. i think this is one of the rare situations where uh bring a trailer or cars and bids is not the right place for a car like this i think the bmw enthusiast that wants this car is not on either of these sites yet i think they're still really around you what? know craigslist and offer up and it's it's a it's a younger kind of different audience I, I actually think the audience for cars and bids and bring a trailer is a little older than than both websites would like to believe. Um, yeah. You know, because it's people with disposable money. The guy that wants this car, this is going to be his only car. Uh, right. Most of the people that are poking around on these sites, these are looking yeah. at another car, you know, an enthusiast car, a car to add to the collection. Yeah. Um, the, guy this, who, the guy who's buying this car is still paying off his student loan. Is that what you're right. saying, JP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, God, I got to think if this were on Craigslist on Seattle and it was was listed for eight or nine thousand dollars it would go unbelievably right. fast now if it right. were an automatic it would sit there at five thousand dollars and eventually would yeah. sell um right you know, and in the Southwest, uh, and you know, like where I'm at in uh, in in Vegas, you know, you all drive, nobody drive. wants an all-wheel drive car. Right. So, um, right. but the fact that it's that it's a manual, I mean, this is the E90. Uh, the, yeah. When they when BMW went to this platform, I really think this is probably the best platform BMW ever made. Everything after this era of BMW just went downhill. They started yeah. underbuilding the cars, and they got more and more cheap and smaller engines. This engine, yeah. the, the the what is it, the 2.5 straight six. Uh, um, yeah. it is bulletproof. This is a yeah. three hundred thousand mile car. This is one of yeah. the last three hundred thousand mile cars. How many? How many yeah. modern cars can you say? No. Yeah, no. it's going to get two hundred to three hundred thousand. You're going to replace turbos again. and all this other yeah. nonsense. Yeah. yeah. So my buddy Jeff Harley bought this platform car with the bigger motor. Is it a mm-hmm. three liter motor, JP? That uh, made. Yeah the the three thirty. Yeah, 330, manual yeah. transmission, and he, he ordered the car. So it's got like sports suspension and sports mm. seats, manual gearbox and the taller wheels. And um, and then he leased it for three years. And, of course, I got to drive that car all the time because it was like my best friend. And it was white with black with aluminum inlay. And oh, the, the aluminum cool so system. good, yeah. And, and every time I borrowed that car, I kept thinking, what in the hell am I driving that I don't have one of these? Because the car is just so much fun just to drive to the store. is like an event. Like it just, yeah. it, 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 the way that the, the horsepower and the torque, the, the gearbox and the clutch, it just, everything about the car was fantastic. Um, and so I would imagine this car, even though it's not quite the same equipment, is not that far off. And to think that his car was fifty grand and this car sitting at fifty or five is just unbelievable. You know, it's just well. Here's the second thing I think that could be going on, and I watched an auction yesterday on cars and bids that was very similar. Um, uh-huh. It was it was a car on the East Coast. It was a 2003 Wrangler six speed, or no, I'm sorry, 2003 Wrangler uh, six cylinder with the automatic. Right. It was silver. It had a cool cage on it. It had the right mods. You know, big mm-hmm. tires, the lifted, the right height, yeah, yeah. and everything. It was a really clean, nice. Uh, Wrangler was on the East Coast and it was just yeah. sitting around at like seven thousand dollars and I'm sitting there going, man, I got nobody was touching it. I mean, we were, right. it, it got right. down to three minutes, nothing, nada. I'm going, yeah. I, I have to bid on this. I was, I'm like, going, how am I going? I have to fly to Virginia uh, to go buy a Jeep and then all of a yeah. sudden, bleep, yeah, you know, a hundred dollar up. 
And then yeah. it got down to 10 seconds, blip, another $100. I mean, my right, wife right. and I were actually at the mall. Uh, and I'm like, oh, you can't believe this. It just went for another 20 <laughs> minutes. And it ultimately got up to like, I think it was uh, 12 grand, which is what the thing was worth. You know, right. so it got there, but very, very slowly. And it didn't do it until the very end. So I suspect yeah. either it's the audience or yeah. people are just waiting to the last minute. This type of buyer, the less expensive buyer, is just going to wait to the last minute, and they're going to right. ink and it up a hundred dollars yeah. at a time. Look, it's a no reserve car. It's regionally challenged, and maybe there's some people hiding in the in the bushes. But here we go uh, out of Portland, Oregon, um, not too far from your uh, you know where you your home yeah. back uh, where you grew up. But here we go, uh, a Northwest car all day long. I, is this really a nine thousand dollar BMW? I, I that's my that's my bid nine grand. I don't think it's breaking ten, um, and it'll be a steal if it goes for seven or eight. So there you go. That's my bid. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't honestly, I don't think it is uh, a nine thousand dollar car or a ten thousand dollar car. I mean, I think compared to cars that are worth that, I think it's one of the best cars you could get for the money. Um, sure. But I mean, this thing probably books at five or six. So uh, you know, even with the lower miles, um, I'm sixty thousand miles. It's brand new. I, I know, right? This car in JP is. Speed, yeah. This car has not broken in yet. Yeah. <laughs> Throw some different wheels on this thing. I mean, I I actually had one. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I mine wasn't yeah. a manual. I had this this exact same year car. Uh, it was the same color, uh, but I had the the 19 inch CSL wheels on it off of a yeah, M3, yeah, really cool. uh, yeah, and yeah. it did have the the aluminum inlay. So it looked. We called it the uh, the MacBook. Um, yeah. Because that's basically what it looked like right. driving around. Right. Uh, but this car is so much better with the manual. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm going to say 85. I'm going to go under you again. I know. It, I, I think you it's worth more, but I think it's, I'm going to undercut chip. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll right. see what happens. All right, okay. Man. Cool. Um, let's stay on cars and bids, JP. And okay. we're just going to pop on over to uh, a car I picked out. This is a 2008 Mercedes-Benz S63 AMG. And... In the shadow of the car or in light of the car that we just uh, looked at, here's another car that I'm just going to start off with. JP, this car was $149,000 when it was brand new 12 years ago. This car has just $36,900. And um, reading Doug DeMiro's uh, recap of this car, there are no issues with this car. No paintwork, no bodywork, no smoking. Nobody died in the trunk. Um, <laughs> it, it doesn't have a recall. It's never been an accident. And it is sitting here this morning with just about four hours to go. Let me remind you, 37,000 miles for an S63 AMG. It's sitting at $17,000. What am I missing? My God, this is a ton of car for the money. Um, and again, we're not talking about a 12-cylinder. The S63 is Mercedes-Benz hand-built 6.2-liter V8 that makes over 500 horsepower and nearly 500 pound-foot of torque. Those motors are really good and really reliable. It's not the V12s that you're going to have problems with when they come out of warranty. This car should be free of issue and just receive regular maintenance for the next 10 years or 70,000 miles um, without any issues. I Believe it or not, it's a luxury car I wouldn't mind owning that didn't necessarily have a warranty because there's not a ton to it. It's not turbocharged. It's not an exotic V12. It's not some weird transmission. It's just an automatic, and it's just a normally aspirated V8. And yet there it sits out of Fort Worth, Texas, uh, with 37,000 miles. I cannot stress this enough. $17,000. There you go. Value pick of the day. I thought the G-Wagon was sweet. Look at this thing. I mean, even if it goes for twice as much as it's sitting right now, that is insane. All, that is the most car you could possibly get for under 50000 bucks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a good boat Lord. anchor, but it's fun to drive. Right. And um, it's got sport. It's got AMG sport exhaust. So there's there's a... There's a box that somebody ticked that makes the exhaust sound good. So this thing probably sounds like an offshore power boat or like a NASCAR or something. <laughs> it's, it's insane. What yeah, and you're just in all the leisure, too. The only thing you got to watch out for is if you buy this car and you drive it home, uh, watch out for jackrabbits. A very good friend of mine from the Northwest came down to Vegas to buy a car almost identical to this one. And on his way wow. home, he hit a jackrabbit and took out one of the oil coolers in the front. Uh, oh, that's good to know. That's, that's so good. that is one of the you things heard to think here. about. You, you heard it here on Bit Nerds. Watch out for jackrabbits if you're 
you're in a car and you're driving it home from an auction site. There you go. Watch out for jack holes on a website that are telling you uh, on a YouTube channel tell you to buy a car oh. and then jackrabbits when you're driving it home. Uh, the yeah. perils of owning uh, or buying yeah. a car on an auction and getting it back right. to where you live uh, yeah. are real. The struggle is real. Uh, man, what a fantastic car. What's your bid? Oh, man. I JP, we are guessing here. This is crazy. Yeah. I Listen. I agree with you at, at 17,000. So double that would be 34. I, I, I have to assume that the reserve has got to be somewhere near there. And yet for some reason, is it the limited audience on cars and bids? Is it the softening of luxury cars? The fact that this is an S platform and nobody wants to take this on or plump for the warranty that is holding the value back on this car. It's hard to guess in this arena. Um, because that's all we're doing. Cause we're just nerds. Yeah. We're not experts. Um, <laughs> We don't even look I, at the book values before we do this. <laughs> no, I think that'd be cheating. It'd be, you know, it'd be, right? it'd, it'd, that'd really be cheating if we did that. So NADA, we're really just kind of going yeah, from the cup. Yep. I had written twenty two thousand uh, dollars last night when oh. I did this, and I and I and I don't think it sells at that price. But I think the car has also um, it's got a few more. No, it doesn't have any more bids. It's got thirteen bids. Oh no, it was on nine bids last night at sixteen thousand bucks. So now it's on thirteen bids at seventeen thousand. So I'm gonna I'm gonna increase my bid. I'm gonna go. $26,000 and say that it doesn't sell there, that the reserve has to be $35,000 or 40. Yeah. It's crazy to me. I'm going to go 26,000 bucks and go no sale at that price. I mean, do you and, buy it? Do you personally buy it? If it only gets to 26, do you, do you I reach absolutely. out and I would get this car? For, oh, for 30 grand. Absolutely. I, I this mean, is, buy so me a much. ticket to, to uh, Texas. We'll go yeah. down and get it together. This would be a good, you got trip. it. We could yeah. do a show I, live from the road, yeah. from the road at the, at the, at the handover. Um, it also says it has black interior. And as we look closely at the photos, it's, it's not, gray interior. Yeah. Maybe that's a little polarizing. It's got that, what you and I both decided Porsche has that, like, was it pebble gray or ash gray that we don't like? Mm. Ugh. So that's kind of barfable, but I still, the outside is beautiful. I, whatever. Anyway, what's your bid JP? I'm yeah, going 26 I, grand, you. no sale. I think people are, are skimming over this ad. I think you see an S class and you go, whatever. Um, and they're not noticing the six, three part. I think you see this car and you just automatically think 12 cylinder and go, eh, I don't want that. Who wants that in their life? That's going to be just, right. that's just a headache. But this car, a six, three, oh my God. If that, if this six, if this were a G wagon with the same engine, you know, yeah. you're talking about $190,000, hundred thousand dollars. I know. Um, I know. Crazy. So yeah, I I'm gonna go a, just a little higher than you. I I'm with you. I I'd be surprised if it breaks thirty, um, because yeah. that's. But yeah, I'm gonna go twenty nine. Twenty nine. I think that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, and I I think if it breaks, <clears throat> look, I think this thing needs to get to like twenty five bids to get to thirty five thousand dollars, and then the question of whether or not it sells at that price comes yeah. into play. But I don't think either of our bids. I think both of our bids are a no sale, and yours is probably the smarter because it's closer to what I believe it's worth. <clears throat> but I'm just reading the auction. I'm looking at the tea leaves and reading the room, and it doesn't look like this car has an audience yet. And again, it's it's, it's terrible. I might think to run the car, to be honest. Um, yeah. But maybe somebody steals it. Good luck. Okay. All right, very good. Let's, let's move on to the next car. Bounce on over to two. I kind of cool cars. Uh, just some unusual, fun stuff here. We're looking at some rapid gold with these two uh, next lots. So on Bring a Trailer JP, here is a no reserve 1988 Audi. 5000 CS Turbo Quattro Avant, which is Audi speak for wagon with a five speed manual. This, this in this day and age is a freaking unicorn. Um, this car is offered out of, and tell me if this is close, McMinnville, Oregon. Um, Good job. Yeah. And, uh, and it has just 52,000 miles on it. And it looks like the owner of this car or owners of this car have been meticulous in keeping this car bone stock and in excellent, just immaculate condition. Um, it's interesting to note, you and I being Porsche files, that this car is painted by Audi in period in Zermatt silver, a color recipe that Porsche used affectionately at that same time period. Um, so this is kind of also an Also Volkswagen ashy... on the 16 valve Scirocco. Ah, very good. This is a very ashy uh, silver uh, kind of a creamy silver, if that makes any sense. There's like a little white in it. Um, it looks really beautiful on the car. Um, and my dad, I will say, when I was in high school in the 80s, at the same time frame, my dad had an 86 Audi 5000 Turbo that was an automatic and front-wheel drive, and I still enjoyed driving that car. It was very modern. Uh, the lines on this car back in those days um, were very futuristic. 
um, in the era when a lot of cars were still using huge oversized uh, rubber bumpers. This car seemed to incorporate the bumpers and the low, the front and rear valances into the Walsh and silhouette car in a way that no other manufacturer was doing in period. Um, I'm a huge fan of, of Audi from this time frame, especially because when I got my driver's license, that was the car I got to borrow from my father the most. So there you go. Um, out of Oregon, which I think is a good region for this car, a beautiful example of a car you never see. You would be Radwood Gold in your brand new, almost 5,000 CS Turbo Quattro Avant. Uh, this car was an absolute spaceship back then. My aunt had a kind of a basic right. one. Uh, you know, it was obviously an automatic, uh, mm -hmm. but it was a wagon Quattro. And uh, I mean, getting into that car compared to anything else of the era was just like, Look at these buttons. Look at all. I mean, the buttons, right. just buttons everywhere. Yeah. There's buttons for the seats and on the dashboard and all that stuff. You just marveled in this thing in 1980. I mean, this car that first came out in what, 85? Um, so yeah. That was yeah, like the middle actually, of the 80s. Think, yeah. It was like yeah. 10 years ahead of its time when it came to, uh, especially d interior design. That exterior design was also something that people just weren't used to. Um, this car was incredibly popular until the famous. Um, crashing unintended, ex yeah. un unintended acceleration which was the uh, the verdict in a class action lawsuit by the people versus audi north america about a glitch in their transmission on their automatic cars from a few years earlier so these cars in period and the following decade and a half i guess yeah. or about following decade um suffered from Im immensely poor resale value and Audi rectified that in two ways. One, um, they started popularizing the lease with a marketing term they called the three-year test drive. In other words, you could drive the car for three years and then either buy it for the residual value or if the value of your car doesn't match up with you or the bank, you could walk away. So Audi smartly uh, started really promoting their leases. And then also in the mid-90s, uh, Audi brought out a revamped platform for the Audi A4. And I would say um, easily that the A4... Uh, of 1996 was the car that saved Audi um, yep. as bringing technology and style at an affordable price to compete with its European counterparts from um, uh, Mercedes, BMW, and of course from uh, Lexus in Japan. So that was the car and the lease uh, that saved every. Um, everybody at Audi. Lease the car. If it doesn't kill you, just buy it when you're done. Um, right. It turned right. out the <clears throat> unintended acceleration thing was completely bogus. Uh, investigations yeah, found uh, later that all of the accidents happened by old people that thought they were smashing uh, on the brake, but in fact were smashing on the accelerator. Unbelievable. Yeah, because unlike yeah. American cars, uh, American <laughs> cars um, have you know really big... Uh, brake pedals of the era and then they'd have a small um, accelerator whereas out right. in European cars the, the pedals were the same size so all the way across it, it, yeah. yeah so it was very easy for a person who wasn't used to that to accidentally think that they're smashing on the brake and of course the car is taken off into a 7-Eleven um, yeah same yeah, thing well, happened most, to Toyota a of, a, later yeah a lot of garage doors really is what it was yeah, is most yeah. people were crashing into the, their house and, and there uh, was and that's a, just a shame yeah, there was a mindset back then, too. I mean, the same kind of thing happened to Suzuki with the Samurai. Um, right. Not the unintended uh, accelerator, acceleration, but people they were, like, flip flipping over. them over. And they were saying that right. the car was unstable. It's like, no, it's a high-centered utility car. It's people that just didn't know how to drive these darn things. So there was a lot of that Absolutely. going on in that remember, era for some reason. Everybody wanted to sue a car manufacturer. <clears throat> the most recent one that I remember is, uh, remember, the Ford Bronco had the uh, the bad Firestone tires. And people were getting blowouts on the freeway and yeah. having accidents, and they had you know massive recall to change the tires on the Ford. Yeah, it was brutal. Yeah. Anyways, all right. So, uh, fantastic, really, really neat car, really rare because not a lot of them survived. Yeah. They were cheap forever. Uh, what's your bid? It's at nine thousand already. That's just unheard of for one of these. <coughs> yeah, this car's had a little bit of action. It's at nine thousand dollars out of McMinnville, Oregon. It's on thirteen bids, but it's a no reserve auction on Bring a Trailer, which I think is a bit more rare than you see yeah. on cars and bids. Correct me if you're wrong, because you, I know you watch cars and bids a lot and you really see that. But that's my opinion. I think this car's got some love coming to it, and I'm going to bid fifteen thousand dollars on that. <laughs> I mean, uh, unlike the BMW, I mean, the BMW that we just reviewed, the, the 2006 four-wheel, uh, four mm. all-wheel drive car, um, <clears throat> is the better car all the way around. Um, right. But 
this car has collectability. Uh, this yeah. car is rare. This car is going to make you cool at um, at Redwood, whereas the BMW is just going to blend in with all the other cars on the road. Right. Um, so this car is going to easily go for twice as much as the um, as the BMW. I'm sorry. What was your bid? Yeah. I said $15,000, and I agree with you. I think Quattro from this era enhances the value and the appeal of this car across the country, whereas all-wheel drive on the BMW is a handicap out of certain regions, uh, like the Northeast, Northwest, or North anything. So um, anyway, I agree with you on that, uh, JP, a lot. I want to say this car goes above 20. Uh, I don't think it does. It only has an hour and a half left, and it's only at 13 bits, so it would literally have to uh, more than double to get there. Right. Um, so, But I am going to go just a little stronger than you and say 17. Good bit. Yeah, good bit. I hope you're yeah. wrong. I'm not going to go there a you dollar go. over you, you know, just to screw you. Uh, I'm going to give you a fair <laughs> chance to uh, to be yeah, right or more right us. on this one. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, all nice right, let's one. get to the last car. Yeah, we saved, I think, saved the best for last. To me, the most interesting car of the day, including the G-Wagon. Uh, <laughs> we're going to stay on, we're going to stay on, bring a trailer, and we're going to look at a 1989 Lancia Delta HF, which is high fidelity, integrale, eight valve. Um, the Lancia Delta had been made since the late um, 70s, but as uh, Group B kind of expanded, um, Lancia decided to use the Delta as its platform for World Rally Championship. And to homologate those parts, uh, they started to develop a version of the Delta, which was the high fidelity. They're sort of like AMG or M or, you know, pick your your tuning arm. Um, HF meant high fidelity, meant it got all the trick parts. And, And so these cars developed into true monsters. There's two versions that come after this car, the Evo and the Evo 2. Um, that are real beasts, a car you would love to drive. Uh, the eight valve is a little more modest at about 180 horsepower from a two liter inline four with a single turbocharger. I'm guessing, although I'm not positive, that this car probably doesn't have an intercooler. And that's probably the biggest difference between this car and the Evo. And then, of course, the uh, Evo 2, uh, which was the final itineration in 94. Um, but yet, this car is all wheel drive disc brakes, independent suspension, manual transmission, turbocharged, uh, super cool Recaro seats. Um, it's got the, uh, the boxed uh, fenders, you know, on the front and rear, which are kind of 944 and E30 M3 S. I have always been a huge fan of this car um, and recently got to drive one and I am smitten. I want to own one. This car was imported from Japan. It's on a Washington title out of Kirkland, Washington, home to Costco, JP. Am I right? Uh, it is. Yeah, is that then, roll bar? Um, is that factory? That roll bar in there? I don't think it's factory. I think the the roll bar was added. The steering wheel was added. Um, the front and rear strut tower braces were added. But on the Evo and Evo two, some of those things came standard. So what I it looks like is that this guy's put a lot of mods into making this a real driver's car. I don't think he's super boosted. The, it's probably made closer to two hundred than one hundred eighty horsepower. There are some modifications there um, with the ignition and things like that. With all the parts though. on this, Ugh. yeah, this car is inching towards Evo performance um, and be a baller on a budget. Evo 2s in one of their special paint schemes easily bring $150,000 uh, in today's market. Integrals wow. have jumped in value in the last handful of years. But I think an 8-valve, even with some mods, is still a tremendous value. And this car has just 17,000 original miles. And this dark blue paint screen paint scheme is not common um and then uh, i don't know if you know there's an italian brand a a designer called missioni and uh, missioni is responsible for the pattern that's on the center of the recaro seats and the door Hmm. cards so there are just there's a lot to love it's very italian very cool very rally very sports car very homologation special this is one of michael deeb's favorite cars i think this is this is a badass car and be a fun, fun driver for anyone in any climate in the country. And yet it sits at just $22,000 on 11 bids. Uh, so it's still a tremendous value, especially in light of the, the prices that Evos and Evo 2s are bringing. This is this is a real value add to your collection. There you go. An well, okay. in the so U.S. I've got a, you know, you know way more about these than I do. I, I honestly, I have to say, I don't know anything about them. Um, but yeah. well, I do have a technical question that it's from Era, yeah. and maybe you can. So that wing that's sitting up in the back, right, right. that right. sticks up in the back there, is yeah. that is that because which came first, that or like the the painter style skater hat 
that was always sticking up, you know, <laughs> the bill like that. Was was yeah. that was it the hat came first or the car? I mean, did that inspire I anything? Think if you if you look at like Greg LeMond, you know, the early eighties American champ of the Tour de France, those guys mm-hmm. wore those little tiny bicycle hats with the brim up. Um, mm-hmm. I think that came first. Uh, that wing is uh, on, from an Evo or an Evo 2. It did not come on the 8-valve. That car, mm. that piece was added, but it should be a correct Lancia part, Lancia part, but not true to this particular itineration of the car. Um, and that is in full attack mode. That's full down downforce for, full downforce for a tight <laughs> road. Um, and it's clearly done simply for aesthetic. I don't know, like... That's actually going to make you get worse gas mileage on the freeway in and around Las Vegas, JP. You'd I think we should make some down. hats that you, say Lancia across the yeah, bottom of the bill that'd be uh, just to go that'd with that, that car. I think, you, I think you pop the collar for Cars and Coffee and you drop the <laughs> collar to commute to see your girlfriend uh, or get to work if this is your daily. Uh, but really, super cool car. Uh, JP, when you look at this car, um, just compare it to – um a volkswagen gti and then you'll start to gleam the performance right so an 80 yeah. an 89 gti was not making 180 horsepower no that uh, that came from the 1.8 t which came in like the early like basically 10 11 years later so this car was was even though it was similar in size and weight and sort of category to a gti this is way more trick than a gti from the same period uh, and yet it only cost a few dollars more than a gti so it's uh you know it wasn't very expensive they've only recently become super expensive and you're seeing more and more of them because they qualify for the 25 year import there was also the 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 golf gti with the the rally golf came out in the same era Mm -hmm. if i remember correctly but those were never available here uh in america so also um all right so what's your bid uh good question so i think this car um even out of kirkland washington even though it hasn't moved much i think there's got to be a little room left for it uh, and when you consider the values, uh, sixty-five to eighty-five thousand dollars for an Evo, and ninety to one hundred and fifty for an Evo two, um, I think this car is going to bring thirty-four thousand dollars. I think there's still a little bit of action left on this particular auction, and if it goes for less than that, I think somebody got a great deal. Okay, I you know I I really don't know enough about one of these to be strong on it, so I'm basically taking yeah. what you told me, uh, and I'm gonna look at okay how many bids are left uh, or how many bids have there been? There's been eleven bids, and uh, yeah. we got an hour, almost two hours left. Um, I'm gonna so what's thirty percent more of where it's at? I don't think it's gonna get much higher than that. So what was your bid? Yeah, I said thirty four thousand dollars. Thirty four. I'm gonna say it just breaks thirty at thirty one. Yeah, it's a good bit. Yeah, there you go. It's a, it's a pure cool, man. Yeah, well, today's the rubber match because you, you cleaned house yesterday. You got four of the five yesterday. And on Monday, I think I spanked you. I got four of the five. So, so today will be our rubber match. And then Friday will just be for fun. Cool. Well, I'm uh, I'm staying on you because it looks like my camera has frozen up. So uh, no why don't you say goodbye? Tell everybody yeah. where to go and what to do. Should they subscribe? Yeah. Should they like? Tell everybody Absolutely. what's up. Absolutely. Please, 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 please. So we are coming to you live on Facebook. We are migrating over to YouTube. Um, and we encourage you to subscribe to Bid Nerds on YouTube. Look for updates and, uh, and things on Instagram as well, also at Bid Nerds. Um, but uh, we appreciate you joining us every morning at 9 a.m., And uh, you can also see some information with us at Der Fascination and The Rami Show. So uh, please tell a friend. Please subscribe. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be here. Listen to us, but don't take our advice. We're the (laughs) Big Nerds. I'm Michael Deeb. He was John Polnick. And uh, enjoy your turkey day tomorrow. And we'll see you on Friday. Thank you. That was the only good advice that you got was not to listen to us. Uh, We're going to have a special episode tomorrow uh, with a guest. Uh, So tune in on uh, when you're like, uh, take a look at it when you're with with Matt. Yeah. So when you're done uh, having turkey or before, if you're waiting for it to be cooked and you need some uh, company, come and hang out with us on uh, at uh, YouTube or Facebook. See you guys tomorrow. Excellent.